As one of the most sensational additions to the UFC's roster of all time, Alex Poetan Pereira has had a huge impact on the sport in a very short amount of time. With knockout wins over past, present, and future champions, and capturing the belts of two divisions in the process, Alex has earned the attention of fans worldwide. But that fast track to the big leagues has come at the cost of any record-building fights or easy matchups. A difficult challenge considering how underdeveloped much of the kickboxer's overall game is. With a largely untested grappling skill set and a date set to defend his belt against another more well-rounded opponent, his ground capabilities may become a factor once more. It raises the question, how good is Alex Pereira's grappling? What is going on everybody? Welcome to the Fight Dialogue. My name is Tim and today I'm going to be studying the grappling skills of Alex Pereira. In order to do that, I'm going to break down six key elements of grappling as they relate to the sport of MMA. For each category, I give a score based on a scale of 1 to 10 and then at the end of the video, I take the average of those scores to get an overall grade. I base these scores off of my own observations of their most recent fights of relevance and the quality of the opponents that they have faced. Every fight starts from a standing position, so let's begin with takedown defense. For many of you, this category may be the only reason you clicked on this video, so I'm going to try and give as much detail as possible here. As a highly skilled kickboxer who has every incentive to keep the fight standing, this is a crucial area of Alex's grappling skills, and fortunately for him, it is clearly the most developed skill. Every single one of Poetan's opponents have attempted to ground him, with the exception of one idiot who paid dearly for his ill-fated game plan. So Panetta wouldn't have made it far at all in the sport if he didn't have at least some measure of talent staying upright. The first thing to point out is how well the Brazilian uses the cage to his advantage. Leaning his back up against it and jockeying for position, oftentimes from there Alex will have a little bit of difficulty circling away, but he at least shuts down most of the typical offense you might see from here. Using a strong wizard and short clinch strikes, tiring out opponents and earning frequent referee intervention, which seems to be his most consistent method of separation. Even when Pereira is doing all the right things against the cage, it's not impossible to ground him from here, which may be due to that willingness to stay there and neutralize the position while waiting for the ref. This could generally lead to some less than appealing visuals for the judges. Circling back to the strikes that Alex makes use of from the clinch, they are an excellent deterrent against underhooks. The use of one or both underhooks can greatly increase the likelihood of a takedown, but they can also increase your risk of getting elbowed in the head, which is exactly what Pereira is good at reminding people of. Strikes are also his best friend in open mat scenarios where he is much more likely to be put down. Alex has an extremely upright stance, so it gives wrestlers an easy target to shoot at. His utilization of uppercuts and an absolutely deadly skill set with knees gives takedown artists considerably more risks to factor in, especially as the fight goes longer and the takedown attempts become easier for Pereira to predict. Alex has a halfway decent brawl that's on display against the more rudimentary attempts, but I will once again mention his stance here because it really doesn't do him any favors. Not only is his stance quite square and upright, but the guy was easily one of the tallest human beings ever to compete at middleweight. It's so ridiculously easy for opponents to change levels and get clean penetration and enter onto his legs before he's able to effectively sprawl. The way he throws kicks is a problem too because unlike a traditional kick where the stance is more bladed and balanced to the point where even if a kick is caught there's a chance the kicker can remain upright and defend. Alex trades balance for power and the mechanics of his leg strikes are devastating. But when his attack is grabbed, there is a 90% chance he's fallen to the floor afterwards. Now that Alex Pereira fights in a heavier weight class, where the fighters are slower and taller themselves, I think this has given Poetan just enough of a favorable advantage to where his defense is at least a little more effective. More time in this weight class and matchups against more grapple-heavy opponents will be key to learning if this theory of mine is accurate. So for now, I will give Alex the score of 7 for takedown defense. Next is ground and pound defense. 
Now, the most critical thing about this category for Pereira is how he almost always finds a way back up to his feet. The reason I didn't mention it in the previous category is because the stand-ups don't come immediately, that's for sure. He allows opponents to get credit for the takedown and establish control, but to his credit, he makes a concerted effort to stand up. It's just a pretty laborious process. This is probably because Alex only knows how to get up of two ways, which is to either use the cage to build up, which he does quite well, or transition to turtle and build back up. The biggest issue with this method is it exposes the back and leaves you vulnerable to strikes and other offense. When Poetan is forced to defend off of his back, he simply does not know how to fully utilize his guard to create space and stand. He only knows how to use his guard to reduce the space in order to prevent damaging punches. This is done decently enough, swimming for overhooks, frames, and switching hips to position himself safely. If Pereira isn't going to use his guard to stand up, that's one thing, but we're going to need to see him at least lock up his guard appropriately to avoid being outmaneuvered. There have been plenty of times where his legs were just kind of flailing around while the top guy was threatening with strikes. Against Yuri, the half guard was seen just wide open for long stretches of time. Alex's defense is much less effective when his guard gets passed. And he's lucky he hasn't faced any elite grapplers that have taken advantage of this weakness yet. Closing the guard is an easy fix though, so I expect this to improve with some more experience. The last correction I would like to see made for this category is his scrambling ability in these stand-up attempts. Like I said, Alex is very methodical in these sequences, which can be a good thing but not when opponents are aggressively switching back and forth between vantages and hitting him in the process. Alex's reaction to these changes are too slow and constantly leaves him several steps behind against guys that can really flow. Easier said than done of course though, especially when grappling isn't your first language. So for ground and pound defense, I will give him the score of 6.75. Last thing to cover for defense is submission defense. Now, Alex has one submission loss on his record, which was a rear naked choke in his first ever MMA fight. It was towards the tail end of an absolutely grueling back and forth battle that involved several entertaining grappling exchanges. Pereira was trying to get back up to his feet, and when he is forced to do this in open space as opposed to up against the cage, he can take a lot of risk here because, as I mentioned before, he concedes a lot of back exposure to his opponents. It is in this way that Otoni takes his back, and the thing to note about this turtle position is that when someone gets both hooks in, the guy on bottom has to make a move. They cannot stay here. You gotta stand up, roll sideways, give up the mount or something because when you stay here, the guy on top is going to flatten you out with those hooks and punish you, which is exactly what happened. Pereira had no leverage to do anything with his hips or legs in this flattened out position, especially considering how tired he was, which made him a sitting duck for the choke. Considering this was Alex's first fight, I would normally chalk this up to rookie mistakes. But when I look beyond to the other examples in his career, we see similar scenarios. Pereira gives up the back far too much, but I will say that his ability to resist and escape certain submissions has improved. Jan Blahovic, who is an excellent grappler for the division, had control of Alex's back for some time, and in that time attempted two rear naked chokes. Pereira rightly addressed the correct hand to undo the lock and showed great toughness when Jan adjusted and squeezed. Poetan kept his composure and escaped both attempts. He might have prevented the attempts altogether though by being more aware of his positioning. Even after he allowed Jan to take his back, and Polish power locked in a body triangle, Pereira actually makes it worse by stepping his leg up here, propping up the body triangle and essentially wedging it in place. Alex was eventually saved by the bell, which reset the position to standing in the next round, of course. The insistence on standing back up to his feet is understandable and generally good fight IQ, and earns him some points here but it's also about knowing when to do it and how to execute appropriately that helps avoid submissions. The only other real attempt worth noting was again earlier on in the Otoni fight. 
Alex was actually on top and just didn't seem to have any idea that this triangle was coming. Despite the poor submission awareness, he shows that same grit and surprisingly effective ability to escape technically by stacking his opponent and slowly but surely walking his way into a pass and taking Otoni's back. The Brazilian has a lot to learn and an elite submission artist would be an absolute disaster matchup for Alex. But those are few and far between in the current division, and the submission defense he's displayed so far should keep him safe in the current light heavyweight landscape. So for submission defense, he earns a 6.25. Let's go over offense now, and you may be surprised to find out that there's a fair bit to talk about here. First, we cover takedown offense. Now, believe it or not, Alex Pereira has landed 100% of the takedowns he's attempted. A stat that falls flat on its face when you realize he's only been credited with one takedown in the UFC. But let's take a look at that one, shall we? We see Alex pressuring forward as he's known to do and forcing Izzy to back towards the fence. When Stylebender is cornered, he changes levels to shoot. He gets pretty good penetration and his timing was obviously good too, as he's able to get in on the hips safely. Adesanya clearly didn't expect it either, as he throws a half-hearted punch counter and then quickly tries circling away. Pereira is attempting a single leg takedown here, and his head pops to the outside as he tries to finish it and run the pipe. A tough task, so instead he switches direction, drives forward, and transitions to a double leg, lifting Izzy up and getting the tackle. This is a solid takedown. The commentators, DC in particular, comment on the technique's clunkiness. And touch the face. That was but here's weird, the takedown. That was a weird takedown. See, look at that. I mean, he just like he's just hanging on him so much, he's trying to take him down. And while it isn't the most gorgeous technique I've ever seen performed, it was done better than a lot of the attempts from more experienced grapplers. And at the end of the day, it got the job done. Now, of course, we have to take into account the fact that Izzy isn't really all that much of a grappler himself, but if Adesanya can do anything decently in terms of grappling, it would be defending takedowns. When we look at some of Alex's other attempted takedowns that he never received credit for, like this one later on in the fight, we see considerably less finesse. He's just way out of position here when attempting this trip, and Izzy essentially just hip checks him and flips him backwards. The attempts are admirable, and compliments to his fight IQ for wanting to mix things up, but he needs to sharpen his tools before putting them to real use. The last thing I will point out, as I do in every grappling analysis about elite power punchers, is that a solid punch to the head is as good of a takedown as any in the sport of MMA, and that is something Alex is an expert in. I think it's fair to give him the score of 5.5. The next area of focus is ground and pound offense. This is typically a skill that excellent strikers tend to relate to quite well, as it's a relatively easy thing to translate from their base skill set. However, while this isn't Alex's worst grappling ability, it is starkly underdeveloped for what you might expect compared to every other fighter I've analyzed to date. Let's look at how he approaches ground and pound in a traditional top guard scenario. Not a whole lot of hand fighting or arm pummeling going on. He seems pretty content to allow his posture to be broken. He makes a few attempts at staying busy with short punches and a nice elbow or two, but these attacks are few and far between. In fact, most of the time we see Pereira in position to land ground and pound, he either squanders it or just doesn't have enough time in the round to make something happen. There have been a few occasions where he abandoned the position altogether in order to stand back up. And look, I get it. He knows he can get swept or submitted by a good percentage of the UFC roster. He wants the fight to take place where he feels comfortable and he knows he can win. This is yet another compliment to his fight IQ, but it certainly doesn't complement the development of his ground and pound skills. Alex clearly does not understand how to land effective ground and pound from the bottom either as we see him attempting punches from miserably disadvantageous and ineffective positions like bottom mount. With his lanky frame and style, I imagine that with a little bit of practice, Poetan could develop some Tony Ferguson-like upkicks and cutting elbows from off of his back. 
This area of grappling is more nuanced than it appears, and Alex's difficulties here are a prime example of this. He needs to get his reps in here and learn on the job a little bit, because hitting the bag and light sparring rounds simply can't teach him the tricks of the trade quickly enough. For ground and pound offense, he will receive a 6.5. Last thing to highlight is submission offense. This is something that I personally was a little impressed by. This is because Alex really goes for these sometimes and has come close to ending fights by submission. He tends to attempt submissions mostly as a takedown deterrent, using Kimuras and guillotines to make opponents think twice about finishing that double leg or head on the outside single. He threatened Blahovich like this, and his best attempt by far was probably against Prohatska. Yuri just kind of toughed it out until Alex let it go, but who knows, if he jumped guard, he might have gotten it. I get why he didn't though. The most impressive look at Pareda's submission skills is surprisingly during his first MMA fight. What's even more surprising is how he ended up there. He sprawled to defend a takedown and then kind of flung himself onto the guy's back into this rear triangle position. Eventually, he shimmied himself into what is basically a belly down armbar position. You can see how well he understands the braking mechanics as he's pushing the arm back behind his armpit and against his left thigh. But Atoni recognizes the mobility he has and correctly steps over and out of the arm lock. Alex goes for pretty much the same armbar later on in the fight with a similar setup. And this one is arguably tighter. He was unable to get it though because he failed to maintain control with his legs. While Pereira will receive points and a ton of respect from me for his tenacity and willingness to go for these, not to mention how he set up that armbar, I have to be real here. It is rare for Alex to end up in an advantageous position where he can even apply these more common submission attempts, let alone be in position to do anything unorthodox or flashy. And he definitely still needs some work finishing the submissions he does feel most comfortable with. At least it's something he's looking for, so I'm optimistic that with a little bit more time, we may see the Brazilian get at least one win by submission before he hangs up the gloves. For submission offense, he will receive a 5.5. When I tally up all the scores and get the average, it gives Alex Poetan Pereira the total grade of 6.3 overall. When I tally up the scores you gave him on the Discord, it gives him the total grade of 5.7 overall. Damn, I was afraid that I was being too brutal in my analysis, but you guys roasted this poor man. Back in the day, we used to see way more purists in the sport, guys that were much less well-rounded than they are today. While Alex Pereira isn't a specialist to quite that extreme, he simply hasn't had enough time to become a truly high level in grappling yet, which makes it all the more impressive that he has reached the heights that he has so far in the UFC. There aren't many people in his current division that pose a huge grappling threat, but it is still something that I would like to see Alex continue to improve on. That way, he can add true well-roundedness to his already legendary fighting resume. So that just about does it for this episode of How Good Is Their Grappling. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to check out the Patreon and channel memberships where you can get early access and a bunch of other crap. As always, make sure to like and subscribe, and thanks so much for watching. Take care.